And we're live guys, welcome to this Sunday stream about Ethereum game development. We are going to build a simple game on Ethereum. We're going to build a guessing game that people can bet money and then the game will guess a number basically and uh, whether it's even or odd, depending on whether the number is even or odd, mm -hmm. the player will get either reward or lose money. So it's kind of a casino kind of like game. So first of all, I want to welcome everyone to the stream. We're going to discuss the issue blockchain technology solves in the space of gaming, in the space of gambling. Because whenever we're talking about smart contracts, whenever we are implementing uh, these decentralized applications, we always need to ask ourselves, do we really need a blockchain? And in this case, in this case, the pain point is pretty clear that we want to solve. Currently, with this little project we're going to build, we're going to solve the problem of transparency in gambling, namely lack of transparency in gambling. Because if you go to a casino, for example, and you game against the machine, you, gain, you game uh, against the machines that the casino provides, there is no way for you to actually know whether that uh, slot machine is honest or whether it is rigged against you. Well, with smart contracts and with technologies such as Ethereum, it is for the first time ever possible to build applications that are decentralized and that are really fair. I mean, you and I, we can actually take a look at the code and we can see that the gambling software is, is fair and everyone playing this game uh, have the same chances. And so the game will be the following, that uh, in order to participate, in order to participate, the user has to pay 0.01 Ether. And then, and then the uh, contract will generate a random number. So in order to participate, I pay the contract, the contract will generate the, a random number. And if, if the number generated is even, I will get 0.02. So I will get uh, 0.2 Ether back. But if the, this number that the contract generated is uh, not even, it is odd, then I will lose my 0.01 Ether that I sent when I wanted to participate in this game. And so the good thing is with this system is that I know exactly what my chances are. Everyone knows exactly what the chances are because we can see the source code, everyone can see the source code and everyone can verify that the program is playing fairly. And also, if you haven't, check out coding.ivanontech.com because we're launching this programming course where the whole idea is to teach you guys from the beginning, from scratch, even if you do not have programming experience, coding from scratch and then teach you smart contract development on Ether, EOS and NEO. So hopefully you yourself will be able to build things like that after the course on several platforms. So currently we're only going to build on um, Ethereum. So let's just get rolling guys let's just get rolling and i will use remix for this uh, tutorial you can just google remix ethereum id and you will get to this uh, program where you can basically write code in the br browser which is pretty convenient and then you will also need metamask which is the uh, plugin to chrome so that you can actually interact with uh, the ethereum blockchain through your browser which is uh, which is needed if we want to deploy our contracts from Remix to the testnet or to the mainnet. And also make sure that your account has some Ether. Make sure that your account has some Ether. Because we will need to fund the game contract and we will need Ether to interact with the game contract as well. So there are a couple of problems that <laughs> we will have to solve in this, uh, in this uh, program. The problem number one, that is, I would say the biggest problem with this application and the biggest challenge with this application is that uh, we need to generate uh, random numbers. Uh, let's see, I see that please link this. Um, okay, I, I will link after the stream, but you can just Google Remix Ethereum IDE and you will find it. This is a huge website, everyone uses it, so I am sure you will find it quickly. But as you can see, here we... Uh, in, in our description of the game, the contract needs to generate a random number. Now, keeping that, <laughs> keeping that in mind, we need to understand that Ethereum is a deterministic system. It is a deterministic system, meaning that randomness, 
doesn't really exist on the blockchain and uh, uh, generating a random number is not really possible for it, it and it's not it's not really possible to do to have a purely purely random number instead we will have a pseudo random number we will try to fake random randomness and different smart contracts do it in different ways different smart contracts take different strategies and in this in this case we will use a simple strategy and you will soon see why but um, uh, i'm just outlining the problems and you should know that random numbers are a big problem <laughs> on the blockchain because the blockchain is uh, deterministic and so uh, let's just start start and uh, solve different issues as we go along so we need uh, the smart contract and we're calling it guessing guessing game like this and let me see so this is the syntax for creating a smart contract currently it is empty we have an empty smart uh, smart contract and something that uh, i want to start off right off the bat is to be able to fund this smart contract i want to fund it with uh, uh, with ether and the reason it is important is because as you remember in in our description uh, the whole idea is that if the number generated is even the user should get more ether than the user put in meaning that the smart contract from the beginning needs to have some funding it, it needs to hold some some money because otherwise this will of course not 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 work so what we have to do is that we need to create this empty function uh, and when, whenever you have an empty function it basically means that it can uh, it is it is so-called fallback function and if you want to just send money to the smart contract you implement this uh, this empty function and when i say empty i mean that it has no name and it will be called a fallback function that if the contract is receiving funds well it will call this function and it needs to be public and it needs to be payable and so by just having this empty nameless function we can actually start sending funds to the smart contract so i will now deploy it on uh, on a ring test testnet just so we can start playing around uh, from the start and i will click create here and uh, <laughs> as you know i have my account here my metamask account with my testnet ether and uh, we can now create the account and it will be uploaded to the uh, to the testnet so when i click create metamask appears I, I click submit and now i have one pending transaction i see in, i see in the comments definitely smash the likes i see william i see vortex amazing to see you vortex here we're gonna be live on world crypto network in a few hours so we're still waiting for this contract to publish and that is the thing sometimes when you are developing smart contracts you need to keep in mind just publishing this thing on the testnet can take several seconds but now as you can see it has been published and so what we can do what we can do is that we can now start sending ether to the smart contract so for example to send some ether let's say i want to send 0.1 ether to this smart contract i write 0.1 here i create uh, i select ether because i want to send ether and then i uh, click fallback here and once again metamask will uh, pop up and i will have to uh, authorize the transaction so i can do that and now we have one pending transaction once again exactly sm smash the likes guys and now we have to wait for this transaction to be mined once again so normally when you're developing you wouldn't actually push each and every change to the testnet and we will not do that either uh, i just want to show you right uh, right when we start because it is very interesting to see the actual changes being done to this smart contract on etherscan which we will do shortly and so uh, now we just wait until this is not pended and until this is <laughs> this is mined all right guys black coffee currently i'm drinking tea guys currently i'm drinking tea so let's see if this has updated so what we can do now you see it's zero pending transactions so now if i copy the uh, address of the smart contract by clicking here and i go to rinkyby testnet on etherscan i can actually paste it here and i can see that this contract that we just created here and funded it with 0.1 ether we can actually see that everything is correct uh, on etherscan so we see that the contract has 0.1 ether and we have one transaction going to it 
and you can actually verify so that everything worked out. So now we can uh, we can fund the smart contract, which is very good. Now we can actually building the logic of the game, the actual logic. So let's create a new function called play game. And so this is what the user would call whenever the user wants to play a new game. So as you remember, the user comes, the user needs to pay 0.01 ether, and then the whole game will start. And the game is pretty simple. We basically generate random number. And then if the number is even, user gets 0.02. And if the number is odd, the user loses uh, whatever they put in, 0.01 ether. So what we can do is that we can create this function play game and it also needs to be payable because it will receive funds. So whenever you have this function, whenever you have this function that receives funds, it needs to be payable and it is also public like this. And so there are several things we need to do. First of all, we have a couple of rules. Rule number one, as we mentioned, is that the user needs to pay 0.01 ether. So if the user pays anything else, we want to abort the mission. We do not want to uh, continue uh, with this smart contract. We just want to say to the user that, you know what, uh, you need to pay exactly 0.01 ether. And then rule number two that we have in this uh, system is the following that, uh, let's see, rule number two. And the rule number two is that the user gets 0.02 ether back if number is even so we will have to generate a random number here and i would say the random number generation would be the most complex of this uh, uh, of all of, of all of that we do in this smart contract so first of all what we have to do is to check so that the user paid exactly 0.01 ether and we can do that by checking message that value and so if message that value is 0.10 uh, 0.01 ether like this well it is all fine however what we want to do is to check whether it is not so if it is not 0 0.1 uh, ether we want to throw and throw basically <laughs> basically means that we abort the smart contract and as you can see it gets us a warning it gets us a warning because the throw operation is actually deprecated and uh, now instead you use a reverse or assert or some other way of checking of, of throwing an exception but i mean for this tutorial i want to use javascript virtual machine so currently we use the uh, testnet and uh, uh, and in javascript virtual machine uh, only throw works the newer versions of throw such as assert do not work for some reason in javascript virtual machine so we just ignore this little deprecation for now we just ignore this little deprecation and so now we can actually let's deploy this contract in javascript virtual machine so this will not be on the testnet this will be only here in the browser but the good thing with the browser is that is it is very fast we do not have to wait for several seconds before the contract is deployed so as soon as we create uh, click create we now have uh, the contract up and running also something else that i wanted to do is to create a function that will give us the balance of the smart contract so that we can easily get the number of ether the smart contract currently uh, currently possesses which is which is quite convenient so what we do is that we create this function and um, it is called get balance it is public meaning that we will be able to access it from here and it returns a, a an integer basically and what we do is that we return this balance this will ba basically return the uh, the balance of this smart uh, contract. Let's see what is happening. <coughs> and we need to write returns like this. So now if I create this, let's see, close this. If I get balance, you see it is zero. We need to fund the smart contract. And as we did before, I will have this account here and I will send one ether to this smart contract by using the fallback func function we, uh, we created uh, before. So if we do this and now get balance, you see now I send one ether from this, uh, this account and now get balance has this one ether. Now, uh, let's say I want to play the game. Now I as a user, I want to play the game. And actually guys, I need to do something, namely that I need to resize this. I need to resize my face, other, otherwise you will not see, you will not see the important things in the, 
in the panel below. So let me just resize this. So basically, now if I try to pay, uh, play the game, I need to send 0.01 ether. So if I send 0.01 ether like this and I play the game, you see that it worked out fine. I get no errors. I get no errors here. However, if I send 0.02, for example, and I play the game, well, you see that I have errors. I have errors going on. And it says that, that the transaction has been reverted. And this is because we have this condition that the user needs to send 0.01 Ether and nothing else, only 0.01 Ether. So this is our first condition. Well, now we come into this uh, interesting part of generating the random number. And generating the rand random number is quite complex, as we uh, already mentioned, because uh, well, because Ethereum is a deterministic machine, it is a deterministic system, so therefore we will have to be a bit smart. And our uh, random number will be based on two things. It will, number one, be based on the current block number. And as you can see, we're trying to get some kind of value from outside the smart contract to give us some kind of randomness we can use in the smart contract because there is no randomness in Solidity uh, by default. So we need to actually go outside of the smart contract and try to bring some randomness. And so the block number, the current block number can be a source of randomness this smart contract can use. However, if we only, if this, if this uh, gambling application only depends on the block number, well, it is a problem as well. It is a problem because it means that the miner that mines the uh, block, that mines the block and sees this transaction and sees that um, uh, there is this smart contract and this smart contract is actually giving people money if uh, the number is even, it means that the miner can manipulate and the miner can, uh, can, uh, put this transaction in a block with a certain block number to raise his or her chances of winning. So although the block number is a, an outside source of random, randomness, it can be manipulated by, by the miner. And so therefore we add a, a, a nonce here. So nonce will basically be this number that we will be incrementing after each game. And uh, it will be as a secondary uh, input to our random generation, to our random generation. So in order to do this, what we have to do is to use the hashing function. We will have to use the hashing function. And uh, instead of using, uh, instead of using SHA-256, in Solidity, we have Ketchak-256 instead. And so what Ketchak will do is that it will take the block and uh, let's see, we need to get the block number. I actually have, let's see, block hash. And we are basing the hash on the block number. And uh, I have a small cheat sheet here. And also what we need to do is that we need to base it on the nonce, like this. So by taking the block number and uh, hashing it, taking the nonce and hashing all of this basically together, we can get some kind of uh, randomness. And as I mentioned in the beginning of this, of this live stream that different systems will do this differently. Different systems will do this differently. And uh, solving the random number problem is a huge one. And so what we do then is that we convert this to a uh, integer, unsigned integer like this. And something else that we need to do now is that I mean, basically what I want to do is that I just want numbers between zero and a hundred. And so if I take modulo a hundred, this will basically give me numbers from, uh, from zero to a hundred, because if it goes above a hundred, it will, uh, it will go back to zero. So 101 will actually be uh, one. And uh, by having this operator, we solve this problem that the numbers can be very, very huge. So that's it guys. I think now we have our random number coded and uh, as you can see, it is the most complex thing of this application. And you really need to know the hashing algorithms, how they work to understand this. And uh, just 
just keep in mind that this is just generating a random number if you cannot really follow and in our course at academy.ivanontech.com we explain exactly what i mean what a hash function does so check it out if you're interested and now we also change the nonce uh, so that the, we increment the nonce by one like this so the next time we use play game nonce will be different the nonce will be different and uh, let's see that's really it for random number generation what we need to do now is that we need to check whether the uh, number is random or uh, whether the number is even or odd because as you remember in the rules uh, as you remember in the rules if the number is even uh, the user gets back 0 0.02 ether or else the user, user will lose 0 0.01 uh, ether so what we need to do is that we need to check whether it is even and uh, we do it like this basically if the remainder of the division by 2 is uh, is 0 and uh, it means that this is even and if the number is even we will pay it uh, we will pay the user 0 0.02 ether or else it means that the number is odd and here is the condition where uh, the user loses uh, basically and uh, if it is even well we want to pay the user and the user is the person that called the smart contract it is the user that called the smart contract and to get the user that called the smart contract we write message that sender we will get the address of the caller of this smart contract and then uh, we can use this uh, variable to transfer so what i want to do is i want to transfer uh, i want to take whatever the user gave this smart contract and the user gave this this value right here and i want to multiply it by two and so because the <coughs> The user always has to give 0.01 ether to the smart contract and if the number is even this will send back to the user 0.02 uh, ether in return otherwise the user loses right here and um, we do not do anything however what we so we're almost down done we're almost done as you can see it is not very hard except this uh, this crazy thing here and as i saw in the comments as I saw in the comments, yes, definitely you should not use this in real-world applications. And if, if, you, if you look at um, actually uh, gambling websites that are live, they have uh, very, very much more complex ways of generating this random number. And so this is just to show you that, that you need some kind of randomness from the outside and also to explore and discuss with you the facts that the miners can, of course, uh, take advantage of the fact that this is based on the block number. But it will work as a demonstration and so the last thing i want to do here is to just add two events because we want to follow everything that is happening so one one event is that the user won that the user has won and uh, uh, then we can just uh, log the address of the user and uh, also the uh, number of uh, ether or actually what we want to do is to um, what we do is that we whether they won or not and uh, what we log is the address and the number that was generated so we can actually see a number generated like this and the same is with user lost so now we can log out these events so if the number is odd the user has lost and you will soon see that it is quite convenient to have these events because you can see you can see what is going on in the in the console over here and so the user has lost which user has lost it was the sender that interacted with the smart contract and we also print this random number right here and if we had even we just do the same thing but the user won so that's it guys that is it let's see let's just let's just try it and see if everything works so we create the smart contract let me remove both of them we create the smart contract we get the uh, balance it is zero let's try to fund the smart contract with one ether so we use the fallback function once again like this now we have funded the smart contract so let's try to play let's try, try to play and so if I try to play with one ether and I press play the game, as you can see, I get errors. 
I get errors because I cannot play with one ether. I need to play with 0.01. So if I now, now play with 0.01 and I press play game, it, it actually worked. However, as you can see, we don't really understand what has happened. Did I win or did I lose? Well, if we look in details here, we can actually see that user lost. You see this event we created here, user lost. We can now track it. And um, uh, because we have specified that when this event uh, fires, when this event executes, it needs to have an address. And uh, we pass the address of the user that uh, uh, played the game. And as you can see, this is the address of the user that lost here. And uh, it is the same address as I have here. As you can see, it starts with uh, 0xCA3. And so 0xCA3. And the number generated was 17. So the number generated was 17 and meaning that it was odd and therefore we uh, we lost now let's play uh, play again so now we try with 0 0.01 and we play game and we check user lost now we have we actually have the same number let's see let's see if it actually up updated the the nonce as it should uh, let's see 0 0.01 and we play the game again now it is 75 and the user lost again and now we play the game again let's see and now it is seven so we are losing heavily guys play again it is zero and yeah zero counts as an even number in this case and the user actually won so as you can see we can just keep messing around with this uh, uh, with this game 52 now we won again and it, it's all about the which number is generated here now let's try to view it on etherscan and la let's actually play with testnet ether let's let's uh, um, play with testnet ether let's see uh, i go here and i use injected web3 and i create the smart contract and of course when i use the uh, testnet it will actually bring up metamask so now i will deploy the smart contract and we need to chill for a few seconds, guys. Guys, amazing to see that 220 people are watching. I mean, this is highly technical. And um, although the game is simple, I mean, you still have to understand a lot to, to find this interesting. And it is amazing to see that you guys are interested. And um, as I mentioned, if you really want to learn this, go to coding.ivanontech.com because we will start from scratch, zero programming knowledge needed, and we will program on Ethereum, EOS and NEO. So uh, basically we have our smart contract uh, deployed and so we will do the same thing but actually now we will see on Etherscan. <coughs> we will see all the action happening on Etherscan. So what do I want to do? First of all I want to fund the smart contract. As you can see in my MetaMask I have 27 testnet Ether on Rinkibu testnet. So let's fund this smart contract with one Ether. So I use the fallback function and, and I fund it. Amazing, amazing, amazing to see all of you here, guys. 216 people. Yeah, I need to entertain you whenever you have the spending transactions. Uh, and this is something all Ethereum programmers that are doing live programming need to think about, guys. I mean, if you're doing live programming on Ethereum and you have pending transactions, you better have some, uh, have some jokes, jokes ready. Because it will be some dead time, as we have currently. And... Uh, there is not a lot you can do, but now you have zero pending transactions. So our funding actually happened. So if we copy the smart contract and uh, you go here, you see that the contract has one ether. We just funded the contract with one ether. Okay. Uh, something else I want to do is that, is that I want to see my uh, account here. So I go to my MetaMask and I copy the address. Let's see, copy address here. And now if I search for my address, I actually see my account here. So as you can see, I have 26 Ether. So now let's play the game. Let's play the game and see how my balance decreases when I lose and how this balance of the smart contract increases when I lose or, uh, or decreases when I win. So basically, basically, what we do here is that we uh, now need to play the game. And uh, once again, we do like this, we play the game 
and now we will have to wait again guys it is pending <laughs> let's see pending transaction uh, a few seconds so he is explaining the code not how to design perfect gaming so yeah guys i mean this is the back end i mean this is the smart contract back end uh, it is not the user interface it, maybe in the next video we can create a website that can act as a user interface for this smart contract but currently this is just the back end this is the logic that's being run on the blockchain and then you would have some kind of website that interacts with the user but currently this is only the uh, logic on the back end and <coughs> i did this video it is called ethereum programming for noobs so if you search on the channel ethereum programming for noobs you can actually see me creating a website that interacts uh, with the blockchain uh, all right, what do we have here? We have zero pending transactions. So let's see what happened. Did I win or did I lose? You see, user lost. I lost because the number was 17 that we generated and it is odd. So if I go to uh, Etherscan and I refresh, you see that the smart contract is now richer. I mean, th this thing has become richer because I paid it 0.01 Ether and the number was odd and I lost. So the smart contract kept my money. And if I go to my account here and I refresh, you see it is now less. It was 88, now it's 87. So let's just do until we win. So you can see guys that this is actually working. Now we have a few more seconds to spare. I'm not salty. More from Richard Hart. Yeah, Richard Hart, I, I need to see this. Uh, uh, I need to see this uh, entry with Tom Ways. Uh, you need to, the throw function to use JavaScript with Remix. Yeah, so uh, exactly, Robert. I mean, instead of throw, you can now, wh when we are using this on the testnet and not in JavaScript, you would, of course, instead of this, you would write uh, like assert, for example, and you would have message that value equals 0 0.01. So this is the correct way to do it. So this is how you need to actually do it. But it doesn't work when we did the JavaScript virtual machine. So therefore we use the old deprecated way with a throw because it works both ways, but yeah, you shouldn't do it. You see zero pending transactions. What happened? Did we lose or did we win? Uh, let's see, let's see. Pending. What actually happened guys? Play game. Let's see if anything changed here. So yeah, we actually lost again. Let's try one more time. And if I don't win this time, guys, I don't know if, <laughs> if I want to wait once again. But you understand the you understand the point. Sooner or later, I will win, and then this will decrease right here, and this will increase. So let's wait for one final time. Bum, ba, 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 ba. Yeah, guys, uh, jokes. Do you have jokes? Tell me some jokes while we are w w while we are waiting for this to see. This is why Vitalik needs to fix the scalability so that we can have some faster development. So definitely sharding. Definitely, let's see what actually happened. User lost again, guys. Let's okay. Final time. If we lose this, because you see, I update now. The contract is even richer. Let's do this one final time. So. Currently, it is 5.38 in the evening here in uh, Stockholm, Sweden. In, <coughs> let's see, what is it? In 3.3 hours, I will be going live on Crypto uh, World Crypto Network and talking about the news, which is going to be exciting. Uh, definitely check that out on World Crypto Network. And uh, yeah, guys, this is the last time we are trying to win. Let's see if we won. Come on. Now we, we lost again. But sooner or later the luck will be on your side and <laughs> this thing here will decrease and this thing here will increase i mean most probably it could be the thing with our random uh, generator maybe it is uh, we can tweak it a bit but uh, i don't see how this would favor the losing side maybe you can figure it out but uh, yeah uh, one final time I mean, it would be awesome if we would win and actually see the numbers going in the other direction here as well.
pending transaction. This thing you see a lot in smart contract development, guys. Pending transactions, pending deployments, and uh, yep. So what is going on? Okay, here we have some things going on. Yes, we won at last. Let's see. It decreased. Hallelujah. This decreased and this should increase. Perfect. That's it, guys. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to smash the likes if you haven't. Smash the little bell button so you're always up to date. And check out coding.ivanotech.com if you want to learn programming and programming on Ethereum, Neo, and EOS. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And I'll see you on World Crypto Network in over a bit over three hours. Three hours and 20 minutes. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye, guys. Goodbye, goodbye. Have a great day. Great day.